while. We're gonna do a five minute video, or at least try to. And I just did a one minute talking about how a commercial landlord, now we happen to be in Florida, but I really believe that this applies pretty much everywhere. A commercial landlord receives a demand letter from one of their tenants. So the commercial landlord owns the whole building, they've got lots of different tenants, and for every one of the tenants, they have a signed commercial lease. Now this is important. Now sometimes, and it's becoming more and more rare, there could be an informal relationship, maybe they're super old school and they do it on a handshake. As their lawyer, I would tell them that that's a terrible idea and that everything needs to be in writing. And one of the key takeaways is that a commercial lease, the actual written agreement, will define all of the terms of the relationship. There's very little law. So I'll compare and contrast this to residential tenancy, right? So in a residential tenancy, sure, the landlord and the tenant might have a lease, but the law gets super involved because the law wants to make sure that people have a place to live and that people aren't thrown out on the street. So there's a lot of restrictions on what landlords can and can't do and the different procedures they have to follow and the different things that would be considered uh, proper in a lease or unconscionable. And then we always get into disputes with uh, residential tenants and the landlord at the end of the lease when we're talking about the security deposit. There's so many cases I've seen over the years of landlords doing it improperly and it basically the landlord needs to know so if you're listening and you're a residential landlord you need to know the law and the law is that you've got to go read the residential statute a lot of times we'll even print out and attach that statute to the lease and the lease will even say that it follows the the residential statute and that the residential statute is incorporated incorporated into the lease now let's transition back to uh to commercial so in commercial, none of that applies, okay? And a big misconception that a lot of my clients have is that the commercial lease isn't uh, negotiable. And the reality is that a commercial lease is very negotiable. Now, in every negotiation, one side or the other side might have more or less bargaining power. So let's just pretend that there's a really hot rental market and there's almost no spaces available in town and the landlord knows that, then the landlord might just not be willing to negotiate. The landlord might say, no, here's my contract, take it or leave it. Um, you know, Of course, we recommend that you get a lawyer to at least read it and to understand what you're getting yourself into, but we're not willing to negotiate. Now that's if it's a very uh, a market that very much favors the landlord. Now in an opposite market, let's say that there's lots of vacancies and there's lots of empty office spaces. Like I was walking around New York City the other day and half the storefronts looked like they were boarded up and nobody's gone back to work in New York, so all of those poor restaurants and shops have closed. And so if you're, a, if you're a tenant or a potential tenant, you have probably a lot more negotiating power with your landlord in that scenario, right? Landlord gives you a lease and you're like, hold on a second, and you get out your pen and you start making changes and the landlord, sure, they can be jerks and say, I'm not willing to negotiate, but then you'll be like, okay, fine. Well, then I'll just go next door to the empty space, literally adjacent, and I'll go talk to that landlord. So in that scenario, the landlord might be much more willing to make changes, revisions. So what's the point here? This, in this case, the tenant was unable after almost three years to get the permits they need. And so they send a demand letter to the, the landlord and they say, hey landlord, we still haven't been able to open for business. We've been paying rent all along, but since we haven't been able to get our permit, we want you to give us a credit, a literal credit for the three years of rent that we've already paid. And the landlord came to me and said, hey Eric, how do I respond? Do I need to give them a credit? And the first answer is, well, I need to read the contract. That's the most important thing. And so I said to the landlord, listen, send me over the lease, let me review it, and let me see if anywhere in there you had any sort of obligations or you had any sort of consideration or maybe you were responsible for getting the permits. Now, if the lease said the landlord shall be responsible for helping get the permits, then the tenant has a great case, right? If the lease doesn't say that, I'm gonna tell you, there's no law that helps out the tenant, which means the landlord can be perfectly within their rights to say, I'm really sorry, if you wanted that, you could have negotiated that, but you didn't, so it's not in our lease, I have no obligation to you, and by the way, you need to keep paying rent, and if you don't keep paying rent, then I have the right to evict you and then sue you for the balance of the lease. Uh, and I, I need to dig deeper into the lease, but a lot of times there's personal guarantees, a lot of times there's other things. So, moral of the story, if you are entering into a commercial relationship as a tenant, make sure that you understand the lease, and if something like getting a permit is important, make sure you negotiate getting a permit. 
So guys, if you have any questions about this or if this is something you've ever dealt with, please leave a comment below and hopefully I'll see you guys soon.